Today, we're gonna to talk about common issues that new programmers run into with the pre-increment and post-increment operators in C, C++, Java, a lot of different languages. So welcome back. Today's video is definitely one for the beginners out there, but it's also an issue that sometimes gets overlooked in those early stages and sometimes comes back to bite people later on. So I thought we should talk about it today and see if we can clear some things up. Also, this video, this channel, pretty much it's all made possible by all of the wonderful people who support this channel, especially those on Patreon, those that take online classes, those that like and subscribe. A big thank you to all of you. You know who you are. Thanks for supporting this channel. I really appreciate your help. Now, what exactly are post and pre increment? Well, you've probably seen them before. In fact, I mean, the name C++ is basically an application of the post increment operator on C, which is kind of interesting. Maybe we'll get to that in a minute. But basically, anytime you're seeing two plus signs or two minus signs next to a variable or an expression, then you're looking at post or pre increment. In this video, I'm going to focus on the increment side of things. There's also post and pre decrement. They're basically just mirror images of post post and pre increment. So when I say post increment, this also applies to post decrement. But to look at this a little more closely, let's jump into the code. Okay, so let's start with a really simple program right here. It's basically just like hello world, only it has an integer and it prints out that integer. So right here. Now today I thought I'd mix things up a bit and use C++, but honestly, for our purposes today, it really doesn't matter at all. C, C++, Java, the issues are all going to be the same. And so early on, the most common uses you're going to see for post increment are something like this. Like, let's say I have this, this variable x and I want to say x plus plus to increment x. And this is simple enough. It's just going to add one to the value of x. So this is post increment. I can also write it like this. And this is pre increment where it comes before. Now, in these cases, these are both going to do the same thing. They're both going to increment the value of x. And note that neither of these are really essential to the language. We could also just say x equals x plus one. But people like the post and pre increment because they're basically shorter, more convenient ways to do this. But as long as you understand that they're not essential, they're just nice to have, then we're good to go. But at this point, you might also wonder why we support two ways. Why, why do we allow the plus signs to come after? Why do we allow them to come before? Why not just have one way if all we're doing is incrementing a value? This seems odd to a lot of people at first. And so to see what's going on, here, let's try to get a little fancier and let's just come down here and decide to increment in here. We're going to increment our x in the middle of our print statement. Okay, so now at this point, we are incrementing x one, two, three, four times, right? So the beginner programmers are going to expect this code to print out the number four, but it doesn't. So let's look at it. I'm going to compile this. I do have a make file. Uh, hopefully, you've seen make files. If you haven't, check out my make videos. I'll link to those in the description. But we can basically take our example program and run it, and you're gonna see that it prints out three. And so a lot of new programmers are going, wait, what? It's almost like that last increment never happened, but it did. And uh, just to prove it to you, if we come down here and we add another print statement, I'm gonna remove the increment here. If I compile this and run it, you're gonna see that it prints out three and four. So the increment did happen. It really did get incremented. It just didn't print it out the first time. And this confuses people. So what's going on? Because this trips up a lot of programmers. And the issue is this, is that when you're starting out, it's easy to think about post and pre increment operators as statements. We're thinking about what they do to our variable x, but we sometimes don't realize or maybe we forget that this is an expression. Both of these are expressions. And that means that they have a value. Okay, and that's where things get interesting because when you put the plus plus after the x, you're saying, I want you to evaluate x first and then increment. So give me the value of x first and then increment it. So increment it after you evaluate or read this variable. That's why it's called post increment. Now, if instead you want to increment the value first and then evaluate the variable, basically like get its value. So in that case, you would get the incremented value. Then you want to use pre increment because you want to increment before you want to increment before you read the variable. And so if I were to come down here and instead of doing plus plus after if I use pre increment here, you can see that when we run it, 
you can see that now you get the incremented value because it's doing the increment before and then it reads it. So the value we get is four rather than what it used to be, which actually is really interesting to think about when you think about how they named C++. You know, so C++ applying the post increment operator basically means that we extended C to be something else, like we incremented C, but really if you look at C++, then I guess it would just say that it really is just C because it's what it used to be before it was incremented. I'm sure I'm overthinking things, but maybe we should have named it plus plus C. And of course, none of that matters. But joking aside, there have been some serious discussions over the years about whether or not post and pre increment and post and pre decrement are good or bad for readability. That might be an interesting topic to discuss in a future video. Let me know if you want to talk about it. But for now, I hope this helps you in understanding code, understanding the code your coworker gave you, understanding some of the code you found online or the code your professor gave you. Thanks for being here. Subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And I will see you next week.